Welcome back to TYT Sports. We dropped the paper. Sports Science ran a great, uh, part of the ESPN by the way, but uh, ran a great uh, pounds of pressure. What is a stronger type of hit or a deadlier type of hit? An NFL tackle with pads or a rugby slash rugby league tackle no pads? This is an, an uh, a, what's the word I'm looking for? A mouth-watering. Mouth-watering. Oh. Usually say feather moistening. Ruffling. Moistening. R- feather ruffling. Question. Question debate that we see in our comment section for TYT Sports of you guys don't know anything, having full pads makes it like a million times harder for it, and then of course right back at you is that you don't know anything like you guys are pussies because you're wearing pads. Yeah. Sports science, break it down for us, please. Simulating a rugby hit, we so first different. send Smith without pads. And he slams into our dummy with more than half a ton of force. Then we strap him into football gear and set him loose again. This time, the added protection of the pads and helmet allows Smith to launch himself more than three miles an hour faster than on his rugby hit. All told, he dishes out nearly 1,700 pounds of force. That's over 50% more force than his rugby tackle. And an impact on par with Pro Bowl DN, Calais Campbell. Well, so there you have pounds of force. Now, uh, uh, later in that segment, like way later in that segment, they did claim that because you don't have the pads, uh, it is a stronger amount of force not pounds of pressure wise, but there's more strength going into a rugby tackle and it's more dangerous to your body because you don't have pads. Mm-hmm. I would agree with Having that. said that, you can see with the added pads, pads that you feel more protected and that's nearly, as I said, 1,700 pounds of pressure. That poor dummy <laughs> got his day lit up <laughs> time yeah. and time, time and time again. But the, yeah, and the reason why this has come so relevant now, just as you mentioned there to me, is Jared Hain, right? So uh, yeah. I watched him with uh, the 49ers recently. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I think he was impressive. I don't think he had a... He fumbled his first he fumbled kick his first, return first, attempt. Oh, well, come return. on, give him a break. Right. Wobbly well, hands. Apart from that, when he did get a uh, pitch the ball, when he did mm-hmm. the, the chance to run the ball, he has got that, as we talked about, that upright... Movement, high knees. He's got that. Adrian to go Peterson. Through. Very, very. Yeah, I wouldn't call him Adrian Peterson as of yet. But the, let's just. I'm, I'm <laughs> just okay, I, I'm not making that comparison. It's just they run the same yeah, way. Same, same yeah. way. But uh, but yeah. So the reason why comment uh, debates like this is we set the comment section alight when we talked about it because I think everyone expected me from Scotland to be like, nah, rugby's a, a tougher sport. But uh, I mean, I'm a now. I would say I'm a true NFL fan. I've watched it a lot over the years, and I honestly just believe that. Because of not just as much the pads, but it's the short spaces of time as well that come into this, right? Rugby, you're hitting, you're hitting, and you're hitting. You're not stopping because that game's continuous. Right. NFL, it's almost like they're caged lions for that 30 seconds. And then, they'll let, and then they're taking a break. They're like, oh, I got myself again. Bang, I've got, one, I've got one chance to hit this guy before he can move. So I feel like there's a combination of the pads protecting you and the fact that you've only got that short space of time to do this. Because rugby league... In rugby, sorry, in both of those, I do know the difference. Come on, from Scotland. But the fact is, is that you you're, you're continuously hitting, so your body takes that wear and tear. So the say the hits at the start of the game, I wouldn't say are going to be the same as the hits at the end of the game because right. it's exhausting, man. Those guys, I will give rugby athletes a lot of credit because to run with that intensity and the stamina that those guys have is phenomenal. But I still say, as you see that with sports science, is that that one-off hit that you would see in American football that is like bone breaking, you're like, oh, I still say that generates more force because of the pads, because of the short time they have on the field to deliver that, and basically, and, and their disregard for their own body more than anything else. Point proven, point made. I'm gonna say, I, um, I've watched rugby on TV. I've mm. never actually played. But to me, I would, I would just assume that rugby is a tougher sport because you're playing, like it's just your body. <laughs> and you're, you're literally sacrificing your body mm. For, for hits and, and to get your hands on, hands on the ball. That's like, that's, that alone makes it the tougher sport to me. I think with, with football, you don't, you're not giving as much of a sacrifice because you have pads on. So you can go, oh, if I hit this guy, I got pads on, I'm gonna be protected. In rugby, you go, I'm gonna hit this guy because I need to hit this guy. Like there's no, there's no oh, I'll be okay. Yeah. With football, it's like, I'll be okay because I have pads. Now force-wise, I would agree football is probably probably has more force. 
but that's just because you have passion. That's what I'm saying. I think you're willing to to go mm-hmm. a, l- a bit harder when you know that you're not going to be hurt right. and that you can hurt someone else. In rugby, there's a there's a there's the thought of oh I might be hurt, but I still need to sacrifice my body anyway. So I would I would say rugby's tougher. Football would just let's say I would say football is more uh, let's let's use explosive. Football's yeah. more explosive, whereas that, rugby is tougher. Right, goes into that small space of time as well because they've only got that 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 play that before they go to another commercial break, whatever. I'm, uh, I'm not digging now. Little, 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 little dig. That play before they a little dig. when they have to deliver that hit with such intensity in that one-off because in rugby, if you miss a guy and you hit, you can still truck down the field and get him in the next play, like get him within the next and still in the same sequence, like. Unless he's just lightning fast. In the NFL, ball's dead, yeah. But in the NFL, like, more, more often than not, you're one-on-one against a battle, and once that play is called, you need to wait until the next play to go back in and right, deliver yes. that hit. Football but guys true. couldn't make it, too. That's true. Couldn't make it. I don't think football guys can make it in rugby. I think well, rugby yeah, guys can make it in the football. the stamina. Like, yeah. I watched my, my, co- my college wasn't by a great football team, I'll put that out there, but I watched their fitness tests. Like, the, it was, I think they had to intense. run in 20 yards. No, it wasn't. The football, oh, it wasn't They intense. had to run the fitness test. No, I mean, the strength test was unbelievable. But they had to run to the 20-yard line and back like six times, and that was it. Whereas in soccer, obviously, we are trying to run two miles in 12 minutes. That's our fitness test. So there's no there's no real endurance test, I would say, for specific athletes in American football. Whereas I said there with rugby, you're combining the intensity of the hits with relentless running. Right. Like running, right. running nonstop. It's crazy. Right. So uh, we leave you with two things, because this relevance doesn't just uh, stretch to Jared Hayne. The Rugby World Cup is around the corner. Yep. Uh, and thanks to TYT Next Submission, you'll see as we close out the video, Dan the Man sent in a uh, preview of the Rugby thanks, World Dan Cup. Man. Thank Dan you, Dan the Man. The man. So we're going to leave you with that. But before we leave you with that, we precursor that with... Jock, you're on the spot. Okay. Would you rather okay. take a padless tackle from Jared Hayne or a fully padded tackle from J.J. Watt? Ooh. Uh. <laughs> A so wait, is, <laughs> is he wearing pads? Am I wearing pads? You are. If if you are wearing pads, you're taking a tackle from JJ, JJ Watt. Watt. Wearing pads. If yeah. you're not wearing pads, you're taking a padless tackle oh. from oh. Jared Hayne. Good, good would you rather? Uh, I think I think I'm gonna go with the pads. I want I want my protection plus his protection, <laughs> like hitting each other. I think I, I'll go with that. I'll go with that as opposed to just. Like a body to body blow. Or, yeah. yeah, it's a tough one. Like right. it depends on how far away they are. Is like JJ Watt coming like full speed from like 15 <laughs> yards away, or is it just like I get like a five yard buffer? F- full speed launching. Oh good. I mean, we're like, what, what, what kind of would you rather would it be if it was just like he's starting at the at the line and he's just gonna push you? That's not a fun. All right, one. all right. I'm gonna go. Gonna... I'm gonna go with padded. I'm gonna and go with how padded. Can have, how can we have <laughs> Jack on without our standard? <laughs> Would you rather TYT sports question? So, would you rather Jason's face tattooed on your ass or Jason's ass tattooed on your face? <laughs> Answer? You don't have to. Uh, I, I, I don't, well, I'm, I'm going to take my Fifth Amendment here. Please thank you for watching, like, favorite, and subscribe, but make sure to stick around as we close out this video with our TYT next submission, Dan the Man, on the Rugby World Cup. Hit it. What's the crack, TYT? I'm Dan. I like rugby, I'm a rugby fan and I'm here today to talk to you about the Rugby World Cup. I'm going to give you my predictions. First I'm going to talk about the opening game which is England versus Fiji in Twickenham. It's the first game of Pool A and it's on tonight. I rank their chances of getting out of group as pretty high. A lot of, t- a lot of them think they'll finish second ahead of Wales which is a, it's going to be a tough ask. I know Wales are missing some key players like Lee Halfpenny which is a big miss for them but I think England, they do have, I think they do have one of the strongest back lines in the northern hemisphere at the moment i think they proved that against ireland they were very the likes of mike brown and johnny may and anthony watson were very lethal against us i think fiji will struggle to keep them quiet especially if they're on their game if they decide to show up um the likes of their second rows like um courtney laws and then the only problem i find with england is that they don't have enough replacements like the replacements aren't strong enough to field it so that's why i think fiji can hurt them i think fiji can be very underrated they were on the pacific islands cup there recently so i believe um as a unit i think they can trouble england because this is a must-win game if the if england want to get out of that pool the likes of um naka rawa and uh, Nadulu will prove to be fucking pinnacle, pardon my French, will be pinnacle um, in that game. So I predict, I do predict England to win that game. Um, 
I won't say, I'd say by a slim enough margin, maybe 15 points at the most, but I do expect him to knock out Fiji. Now onto the next game I'm, I want to talk about, which is France versus Italy, which is a, um, a pool D. I think France were very unlucky um, in 2011. I thought they had a great run. They gave New Zealand a hell of a game. And the likes of uh, Thierry um, Dussatoire and Pacal Pape are the only two starting players that are recovered from the 2011 squad. They'll bring experience to a French team. I think their um, wing backs, I think their backs are a bit uninspiring. They're not, let's say, as, as explosive as the England back line, but I do think um, the likes of their forwards, like Dussatoire and Pape, will should be able to push them over the line. Against an Italian side that really it's missing their best player in um, Sergio um, Parasse. I just think the Italians, they're very, they'll be hard bet to beat the French. I think it is a group where if they do play well, the Italians, they can get out of um, Pool D, but with Ireland, when the best team in the world is in the pool, it's, you know, it's hard to... The French, I don't know, I just don't see them being as formidable of an opponent as they were four years ago. I think it's definitely going to be between, it'll be between them and Ireland to get top spot in Pool D, I think, which Ireland will obviously get, but, you know, October 10th is the game versus Ireland and France, which I will cover as well if TYT will graciously allow me. The Italians are a good team, but I don't think they have enough to push them over the line, so I'm going for French victory in that one. And the final game I'll cover for today is um, Ireland versus Canada, which is also on Saturday. I don't want to sound too biased, but I think Ireland will, should, will and should run away with this game. I think the Canadians are good. The likes of Jeff Hassler, and Van der Moyer on the wings are they're good players, they're dangerous. Um, Hastor for Ospreys has been great in the past. So although Ireland, they're not starting, they have dropped a few of their senior um, their senior backs, such as Tommy Bo and Simon Zebo, which I think will start will start against France on the 10th of October. But it's a great chance for the likes of Luke, Luke Fitzgerald, who is playing um, at centre, and who else has come in, I think. Ian Henderson as well at a second row instead of Devin Toner, which I think is another... Ian Henderson's been playing unbelievable rugby on form. He's the play, better player at the moment. So I think it is a, it's definitely going to be, I'd like to think so, a very comfortable Irish victory. My picks for those three games will be picks, uh, you know, for you Yankees. I'll use one of your terms. My picks for them is England, France and Ireland for those three games. Tonga will win against Georgia in group in Pool C. I think so. Africa will beat Japan in Pool B. I think, I think Samoa will beat the USA. Unfortunately, for Yanks <laughs> in Pool B. Wales will beat uh, Uruguay in Pool A, and New Zealand will beat Argentina in Pool C. And that is the games for this weekend. I hope you've enjoyed my synopsis of them. That guy, yeah, Brian O'Driscoll.